Hi, Mohammed. This is Krista giving you a little bit of feedback on your um, data analysis today. So I reviewed your research questions, and I think this middle one is maybe um, one of the better questions to go with. It's at least a really good place to start. We also have this one up here, too, with regards to social class. So let's look at those two together. In this area of survey, we do have a measure of social class. We also have uh, online class uh, completion or enrollment, um, like how many classes did somebody take. Um, we have, uh, my screen got a little messed up here. Let me clear that up. Um, and then we also have preference for online classes. So let's do a couple of things at once. So one question that you had was, is there a relationship between preference for taking online classes and then actually enrolling in those classes. So the analysis that I'm going to run is called a uh, chi-square analysis. And we're going to look at the percentages of students who responded in those categories. So for we've got at the top up here um, preference for taking online classes. And we're essentially comparing the percentages of students in each of the columns with each other across the columns is, is what we're doing. And um, just quickly see, so this is kind of an odd finding, <laughs> but th the question, what's your preference about taking online classes? So the students who said that they don't know, um, they don't know what their preference is. And there's probably not that many of those students. Let's see how many. Yeah, um, 25 students total out of the maybe 2,000 or so who answered this question. Um, so those students, 44% of those students who didn't know their preference for online classes um, were actually likely to take online classes. <laughs> and they were more likely than anybody else to take online classes, which I think is really quite funny and quite interesting. I'm not quite sure what to make of that finding. Um, it, the, I guess students' experiences with online classes might be kind of a mixed bag. Um, but it looks like students who don't know if they, what their preference is are way more likely than anybody else to have at least taken an online class. So that's super duper interesting. So 40%, 44% of those who said they don't know what their preference is, um, those students took an online class compared to like 19% who said they strongly prefer online classes. Only 19% of those students actually took at least one online class, which is really strange, right? Um, and that 18% is, um, it looks like maybe no more significantly higher than the other categories. It's higher, but it's not statistically significantly higher, which is interesting. If we were to take out those don't know students, um, we might get some different results in terms of statistical significance. So let's maybe try that. Um, I'm going to sort of um, avoid looking at those students right now. So those are the students who said they don't know what their preference is. And um, I'm going to find that survey variable. And honestly, I think that one of the best things, let's see, preference about taking online classes. All right, so the students who strongly, they don't know, are the sixes. So there's 25 of those or so. So I'm just going to, this is not great, but I'm just going to delete those students so that we can just take them out of analysis. And then we can really compare those students who actually had a point of view about it. So I'm just going to take those students out and delete them. Um, All righty. And let's see, number six is getting rid of those. Done. OK. So now let's look and see if we've got any differences in our results. All righty. Nope. No statistical significance different. <laughs> no statistically significant differences in those results. So that's one finding that we have. So I, I took those students out, but even when I took them out, um, although this group is a lot higher, so students who strongly prefer online classes are more likely to take online classes than their peers. That difference is not statistically significant. So um, kind of interesting um, in terms of a result to get there. Uh, you had some additional questions about social class and then online course completion. And we can definitely take a look at that because we do have social class and then whether students took online classes. Um, so let's go ahead. And I'm going to keep that preference in here, too, just because it can be interesting to look at. 
I'm also going to look at passing online classes because that's one that we have too. So, um, social class. All right, I just passed by it. We have, all right, let's see here. Okay, which of the following describes your social class when you were growing up? And there's five categories there. And then I'm going to look at passing online classes too. So how many courses did you pass? So let's, yeah, let's take course, let's see, course delivered totally online for your university students. All right. Okay. And let us keep those same statistics. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So, and I'm just going to scooch down to the bottom of the results. Okay, so we have these five categories of social class. We do see some statistically significant differences. They show up here with these letters. So students who are low income or poor and the students who are working class are significantly more likely than upper middle or professional middle class students to say that they strongly prefer online classes. And those upper middle or professional middle class students and the middle class students are significantly more likely than working class students to say that they only somewhat prefer face-to-face -face classes. So I think what's really interesting here is that this low income or poor and working class students are way more likely than middle class or upper middle class students to say that they would like to take online classes, which is quite interesting. And I think there's a lot of reasons for that. One could be that these students are way more likely to work more hours per week, and therefore they might find the convenience of taking online classes to be quite important. Um, so that might be something interesting. Although it, what we did find too is that low income or poor students and working class students are not more or less significantly likely to actually take online classes. So they prefer them, but they're not more or less likely to take them. Um, and that's because some of the numbers, I think, get a little small in some of these areas. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, not necessarily more or less likely to actually take them. Although you can see that the percentages do change quite a bit. So if you have any questions, let me know. I will send you an email that has um, exactly how to write up and interpret these results. I hope this helps a little bit. Thanks so much.